Hello everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Strategy Guide, where we show you how to get strategic victories and tactical victories in your favorite video games. Hey guys! M12 Warthog. I am back with another strategy guide, and today we are doing the second part to the UEF campaign and Supreme Commander 2. So, as we load in, we're gonna figure out what our next assignment is. It's probably gonna be a little bit different than the other ones. Well, I know what's gonna happen, but, um, Listen up. This is because Siren invasion force was the air new strategic. Okay. As you can see, it has sustained a significant amount of damage. It looks like someone threw a nuclear party here. Yes, sir. Not to that far off. Some Siren carpet nuked the place. Okay, carpet nuking is one. Carpet nuking is a bit excessive. Carpet bombing, I understand, but carpet nuking. <laughs> How do you have the resources for carpet nuking? For those of you who do not know when carpet bombing is, carpet bombing is where you constantly bomb an area 24-7, 7 days a week. We, The U.S. pretty much used that, did that with their Air Force during the Vietnam War as we tried to root out as um, enemy, um, like, v members. go before you prove to me you belong here, Joker. Pretty much as, um, like, um, Rebels in the southern part of like Vietnam try to try to um supply people who what who didn't like what we were doing and whatnot, and we noticed that they had a trail that they had and everything. And well, we decided to carpet bomb the thing, and like twenty four seven bombs are being dropped, and that's pretty much what it means. Carpet nuking is pretty much the same thing, but you just drop a bunch of nukes. Now for me. What I'm gonna do is just have it set up um, wasps. You're gonna focus mainly for the first part on artillery, not on artillery, um, aircraft. Pardon me. I'm actually gonna get rid of this. And I want three more engineers. I'm actually gonna have us build another aircraft base because having two means we can produce two different units or two of the same unit at a faster rate so what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna have this one make more mass extractors now I'm building first on the destroyed sites because what you can do is, if you build over something demolished of the same type, so if I were to build right here and there was a destroyed energy thing here, that would mean that I would take some of the resources from that destroyed one or what's left of it and use that to build the new one. And it's sort of recycling some of the stuff and it doesn't cost as much mass or energy to make it. Now, of course, now I'm going to build one there. You're very limited on mass until you actually unlock a mass extractor. So you definitely want to get as much of those as you can. Oh, crap. I have that set to repeat build. Now... Normally, we're going to try and escort them and provide air cover, but air cover in this situation will mean that we will need to help destroy ground units, enemy ground units, and protect them against air units. So we'll need a lot of wasps, and we'll need a lot of bombers. So what I'm going to do is set up AA here, and I'm going to increase... The rate at which we make our aircraft by having our engineers shoot energy.
this. Got to set it to repeat build. I want to get, um, I don't think I can have any more mass tractors at the moment. So what that means is now I gotta focus on getting some of these AAs in place. As you can see, they can fly over here, but they they really can't send. Like I am off the map. Like I cannot go this way. So that means they probably cannot send units that way either. So what I need to do now that I'm setting up these is actually get my air stations to actually build some of the attachments onto them. Anti-air turret shields, intel installations, well, I should see stuff before they're coming, that kind of stuff. And I have research, so I'm going to reduce cost and time to build them. Now we're going to get more research now that I have a research station up and going. That usually affects that. Now for us, we're mainly going to focus all of our power just on research until we can get at least the broadswords and some training for um, our aircraft, which are broad sort of things there and some of this here. Okay. For now, though, we really do need to send help to them. So, what I'm gonna do, send 13 bombers, whatever I have here. And we're gonna go over here. Maddox, wars are won by those with the most powerful guns. Research that broadsword and end this fight. Okay, yeah, he wants me to research broadsword. Okay, so what we're gonna do, we're gonna take down these rapid point defenses. Because our allies in the UEF, or our commander, those renegades are dropping like flies. Cannot launch an assault when they have rapid fire point defenses, which are ground turrets. Pretty much these waves here are ground turrets. Which means they can't attack our air units. Good job. And when we take care of those, then it will be easier for us. Well, for um everyone else to take out a counterattack with the ground units, because this guy here. UEF and he can't really do much because they pretty much surrounded outskirts of his base area so that he can't really do that okay so now what I'm doing is targeting the engineers which can heal units as well as build them and extract the mass or what's left of it from other units so Now we gotta take out the AA unit that's there, but it's like the only one. Now they start to send uh, mobile anti-air with them. Now mobile anti-air is good because it can move around and go to different places and move where you need the anti-air to be. But the only problem that it doesn't usually do as much as an AA turret, though. As those do a heck of a lot more damage. Okay! I'm gonna set up a third... aircraft... base. And what I'm gonna do... Is have that one make just broadswords. And so forth. And hopefully we can get some stuff done. Okay. Got another research over here. base. His Air Force. Yeah, well, you know, my Air Force 
brought me to this place after the fight was taking place. I can't make an Air Force in like two minutes. Okay. So, what you need to do is constantly send air units over to him. Before we do this, attachments, get those done out of the way. Now we don't have the broadsword. Okay, now we do. Design for the broadsword gunship is now available for construction at your air. And I'm gonna have that repeat a build. It's a formidable tool for dealing with land units and structures, but it is vulnerable to air attacks from fighters. Okay, I'm gonna have this one build it faster. have our ACU set up another AA turret because the only way they can attack us is with AA and it the only way they can attack us with air and our AA is doing what it can. Commander under attack. Oh crap. Fine. Okay. So if I take a global view of the map I'm gonna have everyone regroup here. And I'm gonna take out, focus on their army now. That I got a sizable air force. Gotta actually increase training as that would be better. Increase cost would mean I have to spend last mass on it. Which I would actually prefer to do that than anything else. <laughs> okay. That pretty much this mission is focus all air force. You can build eventually you'll get command of this area here. But as long as you just put up point defenses, you can easily just take them out because you already have an upgraded air force. You don't really need to take the time to go for the land units, as you can just literally carpet bomb them. They carpet nuked us, but we'll show them how effective a carpet bombing is. Mark my words. Carpet bombing for the win. You can build like waves of them if you need to and just send them directly at the enemy. Okay. Something was paused here. I don't get why it pauses builds. I never told him to, but you know. That's a strange thing to me. Okay. Get more units in. They're, they have rockhead tanks. That can usually help fight off stuff as well. But for now, I think we have to go for that shield generator. And these rapid fire point defenses if they're ever gonna... Ever gonna punch a hole through them via land. Okay. Now, I also like to note that right now I have 150 for unit limit. The highest it can go is 250 in campaign, and you flat out have 200 for um, all multiplayer games, as far as I know. On the highest difficulty um, of hard, I don't count cheating, which is an actual difficulty you can get to your AI players. Because I don't want them to be... I don't like it when they play unfair. Like, oh, look at this. One second into the game and I already have like 5 billion mass kind of thing. That's not really fun for me. Sun cheats like that. But it's an AI, so... I guess it's for the people who like the challenge. And don't mind if the other team doesn't play unfair, but... I don't really like the idea of that. Okay. So now I have to take out that turret... I think we're good for now. All of the cyber defenses are suppressed. Okay, yeah, we su time. suppressed that. Now that Charlie is clear, we can enter the next phase of this operation. Coleman has new orders and will be leaving the theater immediately. A transport is en route to his position.
You're on your own now, Maddox. Don't screw it up. Coleman out. I'm turning over full control of Coleman's base and land forces to you, so you can clean up the rest of this cyber force. Okay, so the next step. Yes, sir. You will not attack the base directly. Not yet. They have three land bases, two air bases, and what they're going to do is they're going to try and attack us and try and retake control of everything. This calls for a now, now that we have more control over stuff, such as mass extractors and whatnot, we can, we, we can generate our air units much faster. Now what I'm going to do is have them take out the mass extractors. Now the reason I'm going for mass extractors specifically is because it will cripple production, as they said there. Okay, so... I could get more mass income. I guess. They just have rapid point defenses. I'm just carpet bombing their shield generators. One extractor down. And their mass extractors, okay. So it's good to have a mixture of bombers. And wasps, because um, your dead eye bombers and your wasps are different. Because your wasps is the name of your fighters or the UEF fighters, and those can fight other air units. Your um, and while your bombers bomb units, your pretty much your gunships are like a fighter, but it can only attack ground units, in a way. So what I'm going to do now is I am going to go to this mass extractor here. Okay. Go to that one. The last extractor is down. So pretty much no mass means no more units. You're going to slow down their production of units by a butt-ton. And that means I can regroup my units here. They can not regen yet. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is go after this assault squad of units here. And we're pretty much, after that, going to go full-on raid their base. It's, and this is where the fighting gets a little bit heavy. Yeah, 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 I see them. We have air superiority here. So that's not going to do much... If they try to attack us via air. Now what I'm going to do is... Have this one... Start producing... Rockhead tanks. I'm pretty much just going to have all these start making a land army. I have the factories in my sights. This shouldn't take long. Don't get cocky, soldier. I actually need to pull out my um, units to bomb these places because, well, I didn't have a whole lot of tanks in the beginning, so I have to do that before they get to our, um, to our factory. Okay. I have defenses, though. I'm going to set up another turret here just in case. Now, what I'm doing at this point is specifically making my ground units defend this base. Defend this base so that it does not get captured. And pretty much having all of my air units. Go. 
go after enemy units. To take out a ground base, what you really need to do is take out their air base as well. Actually, I have air superiority, and I have more air units than them, and I'm producing them at a faster rate, seeing as they have no mass extractors, and that I have in two air, three air bases, and they only have two. So I can take out their ground units and not have to worry about their air units for a little while. Pretty much in one sweep, if you have enough units, you can easily take this out. Good job. Keep it up. Now, of course, I'm going to have my units take out their AA turrets as well. Okay. I have some rockhead tanks on the way, I guess. Not that many, though. The police will be able to assault their AA units here that pretty much I don't want to have because there's like nine AA units right here. And I don't want to have to go around. I don't want to have my air units deal with that as that would not be a good idea. The factories are reducing <clears throat> rubble and the chip heads are on Okay, so Look, Maddie, I pretty much totaled their base and I got pretty much grunts, took out supply lines, weakened their air force, demolished their it was a compliment. um land bases, then finished off the air bases like while still suppressing some of their defenses. Pretty much how I got everything done. Um, I do also like to let you guys know that this is a strategy guide that shows you the way that I get things done in a strategic manner for this game. Um, there are probably many other ways that you can do this that are just as effective, if not maybe more effective, that if you guys want to use those ones instead, that is completely fine. I'm not saying that this strategy is the best one. I'm just saying that this is a strategy that works and can beat this game. Beat this level of the game. Hope you guys enjoyed watching. If you did, leave any comments, questions, or feedback for me in the comment section down below would be highly appreciated, and I will see you guys later in another video. Bye-bye.